Hey everyone, welcome to Preface Nomad Junior. I'm Sal. Today we're going to learn how apps remember information. For that, we're going to make a game called Catch the Bone. You can guess what happens. So there's a dog, there's a bone, and there's an insect. Obviously, the dog wants the bone. So whenever the dog catches the bone, like this, the score increases, and when it catches the insect, it shows the final score, and then at that time, you can restart the game. So let's get into App Inventor, start catching some bones. Right, so let's get into it. Um, I'll, let's start with the designer first. Um, I will start with the designer 90% done. As you can see that I have a canvas and some image sprites over here in the project. And my media files are ready in the project. Uh, you can pause the video and try to replicate the designer and file your own pictures first. Uh, don't worry, you have learned all these components and concepts in the previous lessons. I believe you can do this. If you really want to start with this copy too, feel free to contact us. We are happy to send you the copy and the revision materials. Okay, ready? Let's start. So this time the focus of the project is counting score. Let's add a label for displaying the score first. So let's pick up a label over here. Let's add it below this. So we want to set the text of this label to score. And we want to set the font size to 18 and we want the font to be bold we want the width to be 50 percent okay so with that out of the way let's rename the label and let's name this the score label okay um, remember how the game works uh, which I have shown you in the beginning uh, players will lose if the dog touches the insect let's add the restart button for restarting the game then uh, let's add the button below this. We'll have the button's text to be restart and we'll have its text alignment to center, font size to 18. We'll have the font full and have the width to 50%. Okay. Uh, the last thing we want to do is to put the score and label uh, score and the restart label uh, button side by side uh, so that we have more space in the game so for that you, you know what we have to do we have to put in a horizontal arrangement over here place the score label inside this place the restart button inside this and there we go so this takes up uh, the space and let's rename this horizontal arrangement to something say score H A yeah and let's have the width to fill parent and align vertical to center yes so that looks good now okay so the designer is pretty much done so let's pretty proceed to the blocks over here As you can see, we are, have already have some blocks ready over here. Uh, they are when screen one is initialized, or we can say that when the app is started. So we call the bone IS, uh, the insect IS, and dog IS to, to go to their initial positions, which are random positions at the top uh, and the set bottom center of the canvas, respectively. You can pause the video to add these this code to you first and understand uh, the what what is going on over here, so you can have a better look. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, we what we want to do is first we want to set the bone IS and the insect IS to head downwards and set their speeds. So for that, what we'll do is we'll have the bone IS speed to. Okay, so since we need four blocks, let's just first duplicate all of this, and we'll do. Okay. So let's place all of these over here first and we'll keep changing everything else later so we'll have bone is speed to 20 so we'll have a math part over here let's duplicate this four times also so that we can put it them over here all right so bone is speed will be we want to set it to 20 we want to set the bone is heading to 270 so that it goes down we want to set the insect is speed to 30 
because we if, as you as you if you remember in the uh, in the intro video what i showed you is that uh, the insect moves faster than uh, the bone so since the insect will move faster we have its speed more than the bone speed and we'll have the insect heading to 270 also so that it also heads downwards okay, so next what we want to do is we want the bone and the insect to go at the top uh, whenever they reach the bottom edge at a random position at the top so for that what we'll do is we'll have the bone is edge reached and we'll have we'll just duplicate this block over here because it essentially do the same thing so whenever the bone is reaches uh, an edge which will obviously be the uh, the bottom edge so at that time this will again go back to a random x and it'll go to the top of the canvas we can do this uh, something similar for the insect so we'll just duplicate this we'll have the insect is and this to the insect is also okay so uh, let's see how that looks in the emulator okay so as you can see uh, we'll actually uh, both the bone and the insect are at different speeds now and whenever they reach the bottom edge they are going back to a random place at the top and they're falling again okay so now we'll just proceed to the dog and we'll have we'll use this method when the dog is is dragged so whenever so this method gets called whenever the dog is stretched and it's dragged so we wanna let's just copy this so that uh, we just want to move the dog and this will be something similar so at this time what we want to do is we'll delete this and we'll have the current x of the dog that what whatever the dog has been moved to we'll set its exposition over there and we'll keep the y to be the same while we keep why will keep the y to be the same is because we want the dog if you remember in the intro video that i showed you that the dog only moves horizontally so for it to move horizontally the y has to be the same every time and the x only needs to change so that it only moves horizontally on the same level okay so if you remember that whenever the dog collides with uh, the bone or the insect we do two different things so whenever the dog collides with the bone we actually have the bone to move at the top again and increase the score and uh, what we do when the insect is uh, when it touches the insect so at that time we'll have the game to stop the insect stops moving the bone stops moving and the dog is is disabled the dog dot enable property will be false at that time so let's just see we'll place this collided block over here we'll have an if block over here and we'll see that uh, if it has collided with the bone if it has collided with the bone then what we do is we move the bone to back to the top so we'll just copy this block over here because it essentially does the same thing and if it collide, uh, collides with the oh okay no this is not just the if block we'll have to change it to an else okay so if um, the bone gets collided with the dog then the bone moves to the top again we'll see how we'll have to code for the score increasing of the score later and uh, um, if it collides with anything else and the, anything else is obviously just the insect so at that time what we do what we do is we'll code it for the insect so the oh let's just duplicate this block so that the insect stops moving we'll have this to zero and we'll do something similar for the bone so that the bone also stops moving so we'll have the bone speed to zero also and we'll have the dog enable to false okay let's have this to false okay all right so let's see how that looks in our app okay right now we can move the dog you can see and let's make it collide with the bone 
nothing happens because we have encoded for the score. Let's make it collide with the insect. You see the game stops and you can't move the dog again. Okay, so let's just organize this first a little bit and then we'll proceed to the next part. Have the edge reached over here, insect test is reached over here. Having everything organized always helps for us to figure out things. So let's place this thing over here so that everything is in one line. Okay, with that out of the way, let's proceed. Um, now we want to start counting the score. Uh, before that, I want to introduce to, to an important concept in the programming world first. Uh, have you ever heard of data? Uh, simply speaking, data is just information that computers can understand. For example, your name, age, and gender are all information if you ask the computers to remember, they actually can remember some data. But how can we ask the computers to remember some data? For that, you need to know another very important concept in the programming world, uh, variable. You can just understand it as a box for computers to remember a data. Uh, for example, you can create a variable called name and ask it to remember your name. Uh, let's say Peter. Uh, then later you can ask the computer what is the value of name and it can tell you that it was Peter. So for this one we actually have to have a variable for score so that we can store, sc uh, store score and access it later from different places. So why we're initializing a global variable outside of everything is because we want to access score from all of these blocks. So if I was to declare a local variable in any of these blocks, I could only access it from there. Say I, dis, uh, I declare a variable, local variable over here, I can only access it from bone.edgereached. Okay, so we'll set the scores value to be zero in the beginning. And we'll have, since we have declared the variable over here, We'll go to whenever the app starts. At that time, whenever the app starts, we want to set the variable global score. We want to set it global score to zero so that whenever the app starts, our score is zero because that is what we want. And after that, what we'll have is we'll set the score label to show this global score value that we have. So we'll have the score labels text over here. Let's move this down. Okay. So we'll have it uh, to join because um, we'll have the the score written, this text of score plus the score. So uh, you'll see, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So we'll have score over here and we'll have some text call score we'll join this okay and we'll get the global score over here so it will join both of these and it will be like something like score and say it will be something like score 0 for example or score 1 just as an example so this joins the score and that is how we do it where else do we need to change the value of score? Uh, pause the video for 10 seconds and think where else do we need to change the value of score. Okay, so the place that we need to change the value of score is whenever the dog collides with the bone or the insect. So let's jump into whenever the dog collides with the bone. So at that time we'll have the scores variable value global score value and we'll have math plus one so we'll take the value the current value of global score over here we'll add one to it and store it back into global score so let's get global score global score and we'll have one oh no 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 we'll have one over here so at this time uh, whenever the bone collides with the dog the value of the variable score increases by one and of course we want to show it to uh, in the score label so we'll just copy this we we'll bring it down and we'll set it over here so 
this shows the label of score and gets the score and joins the strings and shows it into the uh, global score label. Okay, and so whenever the dog collides with the insect, what we want to do is we want to duplicate this block again and at that time we want to show the final score which will be at this time we don't in we don't increment the value of score we don't add one to it because the game has ended and we just want to show whatever the last value before the colliding of the insect was and we'll show it over here okay so with that out of the way let's see how it looks in the app so let's try to catch the bone first here we catch the bone you see that it increased to one let's have the poach bone again see to two three let's have it crash the insect you see that it is final score now and the score was three okay so if you see it in the app the restart button oh we haven't renamed this so let's rename the button to restart button okay so if you remember in the app the restart button is always visible However, in the intro video, I showed you that the restart button only appears whenever the insect collides with the, uh, with the dog and we get the final score. So at that time, we want to set the restart button visible to true. So we'll have it to true. And whenever the app starts, we want to have the restart button visible to false. So we'll just duplicate this block and place it over. place it over here let's zoom in a little okay so at this time we want the restart button to be false so whenever the app starts the restart button doesn't show and whenever it collides with the insect the restart button shows okay so let's now code for the restart button so at this time what we want to do is we want to take the restart button and have it whenever it's clicked so if you note that whenever the restart button is clicked is essentially doing everything that screen one dot initialize does so we'll have this duplicated over here we'll bring it down and we'll take this out and place over here delete this so whenever the restart button is clicked, it essentially launches the app again. You can think of it something like that. So at this time, uh, we want to delete the heading parts because we've already set the heading whenever the app starts, so we don't need to set it again. So this will be actually redundant and it will be duplicating. So at this time, uh, we also want to set the dog to be enabled because whenever it collides with the insect we have it disabled so we'll set it to enable to true okay so with this um, we have our app ready and let's see how it looks so let's just refresh this and here we go so let's catch a bone first catch another bone first and let's collide with an insect now so you see there's a final score over here we have the restart button click on the restart button the app starts again from the beginning so it functions the same way it would function at as it was first launched all right so what did we learn today uh, we learned about data uh, which is data is just information that computers can understand uh, for example your name age and gender are all information if you ask the computers to remember them they will actually remember it and the next thing that we learned was a variable so what is a variable is you can think of it as a box where you store the information from the computer say you store the data and say the data uh, of the variable name which is the box the name is the box and the data inside of it should say speeder and when you ask the computer to return to you what is the value of the name then it'll tell you that it is speeder that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.